In this session, we'll look at the three different kinds of Snowflake connectors within Salesforce Analytics Studio. Within Salesforce, you can use Analytics Studio to connect data inside and outside of Salesforce. Among the various connectors, there are three different Snowflake connectors. We'll be taking a look at all three of them. If you want to follow along with this tutorial and get hands-on, I'd recommend you visit my GitHub page to get the code. You'll also need to create a free Salesforce CRM Analytics Enabled Developer Edition org, as well as a free Snowflake account. You can get a free 30-day Snowflake trial account by following these instructions. You can also get a free Salesforce CRM Analytics Enabled Developer Edition org using these directions on the screen. Once you sign up for a Snowflake trial account, we'll use that to do a little Snowflake pre-work before we can set up our Snowflake connectors in Salesforce. The reason we need to do some Snowflake pre-work is that there are some things that you're going to need to set up your Snowflake connector in Salesforce. Thus, we'll need to create a database, some schemas and virtual warehouses. I'm going to create separate service accounts, separate schemas, and separate virtual warehouses for each of the connections so that you can easily see what is happening back and forth between Snowflake and Salesforce. One important thing to note is that you can easily get your Snowflake account information from the welcome email sent to you. And a few things to call out before we get started. There are some several best practices that we're not going to follow in our example, really for the purposes of being able to quickly demonstrate the main topic. And for simplicity, we'll use the account admin and sysadmin role, but this would not likely be the case in a real production environment. We'll also be using the create or replace command to make it easy to go back to any section of the tutorial, but we wouldn't use create and replace in our, in our production environment. Here's an example of how to create a service account user in Snowflake. You can create the other three service account users yourself, or alternatively, the complete code is provided for you on GitHub. Here we are creating the Snowflake objects that we need. We've created one database with four different schemas and then one table within each schema. We'll be creating three connectors in Salesforce Analytics Studio. The fourth service account is created so that you can create a new Snowflake connection yourself after following along with me to create the three different connectors. Once you've finished your pre-work in Snowflake, be sure to log into Salesforce. You'll first want to enable the Snowflake Output Connector in Salesforce by following these directions. Then head on over to Salesforce Analytics Studio to see what types of connections you can create. You can see that there are a lot of choices for connector types in Salesforce Analytics Studio. If you click on the live connector types, you'll see that Snowflake is one of the two options that you have to create a live connection. We're going to create one of each type of Snowflake connection. One important thing to note is that the developer name for the connection is the unique identifier for each Snowflake connection. So each of the developer names have to be different. Let's first create a Snowflake connector that will allow us to schedule a time for the sync, or alternatively, we can have an option to run now. Once you select the Snowflake connection, click the Next button at the bottom of the screen. Fill out the form and then click on the Save and Test button on the bottom right of the screen. It may take a minute, but you should see a message telling you that the connection has been created and tested successfully. Once you click the Edit Objects option on the connector, you'll see the Snowflake table available for you to check on the box to the left. You'll want to select all four columns and then resolve any issues such as precision by using the pencil to the right of the values. Click the drop down arrow to the right and then click on Run Data Sync. The status will show as running for just a bit and then you'll notice that the status shows as successful. You can also check the job monitor and see the status shows that the sync was successful. You can also see that Table 1 is now included with the data assets. 
We ran the sync manually, but you could also schedule the sync to occur on a regular schedule. If you go back to Snowflake and take a look at the query history for the Service 1 user, you'll see that things happened in Snowflake as a result of what was done in Salesforce Analytics Studio. Now let's repeat the process to create a new connection, but this time let's create a live Snowflake Direct Connector. This time when you select Edit Objects, the only thing you'll need to do is select an Analytics Studio app. I chose my private app. When you navigate to the data assets and click on the live option, you'll want to click on table one and then the explore button, which will show that you have two records from the live connection to Snowflake that you can now explore. Once again, make your way back to Snowflake to see the activity as a result of what you did by creating the live connection in Salesforce. Now what you'll want to do is add a few more records in Snowflake to confirm that the live connection will automatically be updated in real time with the new records inserted into Snowflake. As expected, if we refresh the screen, we'll see that there are now a total of four records in the live data set in Salesforce. There are some important considerations for the Salesforce Analytics Studio Direct Data Connection. For one thing, you can't use live data sets as sources in data flows or recipes, and you can't join operations on live data sets. And now finally, let's create an output connector to sync data from Salesforce to Snowflake. We can use the Snowflake output connection to move or insert into Snowflake data from curated CRMA recipes and or incremental raw Salesforce data. In this video, I'll be demonstrating the latter option. If you have a use case for the Snowflake Output Connection, you'll want to review the considerations and limitations. Once you've set up the connection, you'll go back to All Connections and select the SFDC Local Connection that was already created for you by Salesforce. Enable the Sync Out and select Service Account 3 as the Sync Out destination. Click the Save button. Next, you'll be selecting which Salesforce objects you want to sync from Salesforce to Snowflake. Then go back to the SFDC local input connector and select the Run Now option from the drop down menu to the right. Alternatively, you can schedule the sync to occur at a regular interval. Now, this is really cool. Go back to Snowflake and you'll see that all the tables and columns needed for the sync were created for you and the Salesforce data has been inserted into Snowflake. Now it's your turn to create a new Snowflake connection using the fourth service account user schema and virtual warehouse. Don't forget to clean up your Snowflake account and you can find the details on GitHub if you need help doing that. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to hearing from you. You can find me on Twitter and LinkedIn as well as on YouTube.